In ancient China, the stars in the sky were divided into three enclosures and four symbols. These four symbols are guided heavily by four mythical beasts. The Azura Dragon in the east representing spring, the White Tiger in the west, autumn, the Vermilion Bird in the south, summer, and the Black Tortoise in the north. Each mythical beast representing an element and for our story this time, take us into the Black Tortoise. Xian Wu, or by her other name known from the different ancient texts, Ziming, representing water and the season winter. The black tortoise is often depicted entwined with a snake, representing long life and stability. It is the guardian of the northern direction, linked to wisdom and resilience and not pretty far off from our Ethergazer counterpart. In Ethergazer, Ziming is a scholar from Shi Heng who has a deep love for physical books, a habit developed during her early years while investigating the errors in Gaia's creation of herself. Despite her intelligence and scholarly achievement, Ziming feels fragile and questions her purpose as she was born with a weak physical body and an incomplete access key. Ziming is a respected teacher but she only acknowledged one true student, Ling Yi, who reminds her of her younger self. Ziming is also close to Gang Chang, showing one PV of her interaction with Gang Chang, and she actually discovered Gang Chang's loss of taste and attempting to share her burden by having the same meal. Not much I know about her and not much I delve into the story while I was waiting for the PC version to release. I haven't been playing the global version myself as I'm actually waiting for the global version to be coming to PC so that I can make a story recap for either Gazer. But for now, let's take a look at Ziming's kit. Water element, range type, divine grace mechanism, and Tianyun faction. On the screen is all the summary of Ziming's build, but don't worry, we'll be breaking down to make it easier for players to digest. So buckle up and let's get into it. Combat Kit Ziming Kit comes with a Northern Star Point or North Star Point at the top and Southern or South Star Point at the bottom. These bars are important in executing her skill, but we'll get to that later. Both bars consist of 120 points each, which can be gained through various ways. Now let's take a look at her basic attack first. Ziming basic attack deals a total of 5 combo at max, a full combo would grant you 30 divine grace, the full execution at level 35 would result in 992% damage, each hit of the combo grants you 6 point of north star point. The top one, skill 1. By consuming 20 divine grace, Ziming blasts the enemy with a minecraft box representing the tortoise shell, dealing a total damage of 750% and gain 30 north star point. Most importantly, Ziming will gain a tortoise mark. Remember this because it will be very important later. Skill 2 also consumes 20 divine grace. Ziming blasts the enemy with a Darburn Serpent striking down. Use the same amount of damage as skill 1 and gain 30 point of Northern Star point. In skill 2, since she summons a serpent to attack, she gains a serpent mark. Player can only hold up to 2 marks and depending on what dual mark combination you hold, when Ziming fill up her Northern Star bar, skill 3 will be available. Upon triggering skill 3, Ziming doesn't immediately launch the mark attack choice, but rather she enters a phase where she plays with her virtual computer. This condition is called calculation. She gains super armor and reduced damage taken by 75% in this state. Now skill 1 and 2 will be replaced by calculation that consumes 10 divine grace or 20 divine grace depending on the player's choice. If you choose to consume 10, the selected skill tree based on what mark you have will be increased by 6% or by 12% if you choose the 20 Divine Grace. If this part is clear, we will talk about the Tortoise Mark and the Serpent Mark choice. Let's make it simple. If player choose 2 Tortoise Mark, Ziming casts a skill dealing 750 damage, subsequently more with a stream of blasts coming out. I didn't do the math, but it'll be more, and gain 50 Divine Grace. This is a very good phase if you wish to refill on the Divine Grace, but we'll talk about the rotation later, don't panic. If player choose 2 Serpent Mark, Ziming casts her funnel atop and land a blast dealing 2250% damage. This is going to be the most damage, but let's take a look at the dual one if you pick a Taurus and a Serpent. Ziming casts a multi slash dealing 1870% damage and casts a debuff of armor break by 16% for 24 seconds. Now, this is going to give you time to choose the other one. Now, I know this is a lot to take in, but let me finish first and then we'll talk about her rotation. 
But if you manage to trigger two times the calculation, the third execution will be the super calculation based on Chinese translation. I think in the English one is going to be a super hyper something. I'm not sure. Now I want you to pay attention to the skills. I'm going to be addressing it as super calculation for me to uh, easier to explain it to you. So when entering super calculation, Zmin basically flies atop and she doesn't take any damage whatsoever if I am not mistaken from my experience. There is going to be first two tap to buff the skills. The more divine grace you prefer, the more damage output you're going to have. When it comes to the third skill, Ziming deals a total damage of 7,900% damage. This is going to be a lot out of all her kit, excluding buff, depending on what you choose again, 10, 20, or 40. This skill is better executed together with Geng Chen because she has the ability to pull enemy to a center point, and then Ziming has the ability to you know nuke it all. So she's basically a nuker with some sort of rotation. So let's talk about her rotation now. But the obvious choice would be to cast the armor break one, followed by gaining divine grace and then enter super calculation, meaning one tortoise, one serpent for armor break, two tortoise to prep for super calculation because you want to regain your divine grace, and then prepare as much divine grace before you enter super calculation, which is the third phase of the calculation. Uh, if you're lost, I'm sorry, but just kindly rewind back to the video. Okay, so one, you want to be doing armor break, so it's going to be one tortoise, one serpent. Second phase, you're going to trigger two tortoise to regain your divine grace. And every time you enter the third phase of calculation, it's going to be super calculation. It's automatically going to be like that. Go try her out in the training field yourself to get a feel and you'll understand what I'm talking about. This whole rotation changes again when we talk about her fang tour, but I'm not going to type deep delve in it in. It's something that's very simple to understand if player pay attention to how to play around with her. The main dodge skill does have zero time. It allows her to deploy a shield when upon hit. She will counter with an attack that deals 1000 damage, gain 20 divine grace and 30 north star point, which is actually quite a lot. You can also charge up the shield by, you know, just leaving it right there. And then when you release it, she's going to trigger the skill the same way. Now, the, the only downside about this is that you have to actually dodge Whereas in the future, S rank Rodante doesn't actually have to do this, so you have to move around from one position, which is kind of lame. But you know, it's okay. It, it does, it's just one movement, right? So if we take a look at Ziming's ultimate, she deals an AOE total damage of 2,250% damage, quite a large amount, and also grant her a faster way to charge up her next ultimate. But if we take a look at her dual ultimate skill chain, Ziming and Geng Chen is definitely a must go for faster ultimate spam. Aside that, only by having them together, all ranged character will receive a buff and can be increased by 20% for 12 seconds. Now, if you swap Lin Guang in, she's not going to get this buff. But if you use Hera in this team, she's going to get this buff. So for my opinion, you can actually use your dual ultimate chain before your super calculation to get that damage increment. For example, you're casting the buff in between the 10, 20, 40, and then you can actually use this to save up time because there's only 12 seconds. So uh, if you're still following me, I hope you understand. So in CN, the preferred either path is the red either path as it helps players to build up faster calculation phases, increase super calculation output based on divine grace consumed, and as well as their critical rate and critical damage if the entire path is red path. Consider that Ziming will be the main DPS in the team, especially for water element as she's outperformed Oceanus. I don't see why you should choose the other path, but you can read on them by yourself and choose based on your own preference. But for me personally, I would prefer with either path. Now let's take a look at her functor. It increased her independent damage by 8%, up to 20% based on level, increase the base damage of skill 3 by 28% to 70% based on level and boosting calculation and super calculation by some percentage. The first time an ultimate or skill or ultimate skill chain is cast, skill 3 is immediately replaced by super calculation immediately. Okay, so this is going to make you enter super calculation a lot more faster than not having it. Afterward, every two ultimates or ultimate skill chains, skill 3 is replaced by skill uh, super cup, like you know, it's it's easier if you try to play it by yourself because I don't think I want to slap all this to for players to actually try to understand. But the first ultimate skill chain will directly lead you to super calculation, and then subsequently the second one. But Fangtor also increases the divine grace limit by twenty points, so you're gonna have a lot more. You don't get capped, so it's very easy to you have more liquid to play around with. And every four second, restore four or five points of divine grace depending on level this is actually insane if you want to max it go ahead but i wouldn't recommend spending so much resources on dps upon 
activating calculation. Now she's gonna spend a lot of time calculation, so this is actually a plus thing to have. And restore 40 points of divine grace upon activating calculation. Uh, super calculate. And restore 40 points of divine grace upon activating super calculation. And here it mentions calculation hyper order. That's the global term, but in these videos, I actually mention it super calculation. So I hope I don't uh, confuse you. It restores 40 minimum and 100 maximum based on the functional level. That is insane. That you, You're nuking very fast, but keep in mind, there is actually a cooldown to play around with, so I don't really recommend to max it out. So here's the thing, Ziming definitely need a large amount of Divine Grace and her functional allows her to skip to super calculation a lot faster. So I would say it's a eight out of 10 to have, but you don't necessarily have to max it. Though she's done a support, but if you want her to be two times stronger, I would recommend to get her the Functor. If you choose to have her Functor, her Divine Grace management is less burden, which allows players to swap out Hera from the team for Lingguan for more critical damage buff and Tianyuan third party member buff. Not to forget, along with Geng Chen, Functor that actually boost the entire team if they're actually twin yuan modifier. This is this is a lot to take in, but yes, the better team would be Lin Guang. Hera is the second one. So the next question is, is this team stronger than Lin Guang, Jing Wu, and Geng Chen? According to element condition, yes. According to normal condition, Jing Wu output is much more faster and superior, and many players were able to double S her or triple S her during her event easily. Jing Wu is stronger than Ziming. No cap. I actually got Ziming skin to go along with Geng Cheng, so hell yeah, it's worth it. Another thing about Warp is that since Ziming with the Tortoise and Serpent actually gives an armor break debuff, you can actually slap the Warp with the armor piercing breaking, you know, it's, it's on the screen, man. So I decided to make my summarize videos a lot more shorter for my viewers to easily digest instead of, you know, having too much of a information to overload with. So um, if tell me if you prefer this kind of videos or a much more detailed videos, because I feel like this kind of videos is easier for players because eventually you get a tip of the iceberg regarding the character. And when you get in and try the character out yourself, you realize that you often don't need content creators opinion, right? You just need it to know what you're pulling for and stuff like that. But once you get your hands on, you know what's up. You're welcome to check on other creators as I do think they have some point compared to mine. And I'm also sorry that I missed out Lulu's guide, but I'll make a separate video regarding Tierly's best team and synergy when the PC version is a lot more closer. Sorry for changing the style of the videos. I hope you guys like it or maybe provide feedback on how I can improve as a content creator. My name is Zaki and I hope you enjoyed this video and find this video helpful. This is basically a summary type of videos and I hope you like it. Anyways, hey, it's just a game channel.